Lake Ontario is a priceless resource and gateway to Toronto. Yet, as with many other North American municipalities, challenges related to the age of the city and the demands of a large population and urbanization, among other pressures, are evident. In 1987, the International Joint Commission identified the City of Toronto's waterfront as one of 43 polluted areas of concern in the Great Lakes Basin. This is largely due to poor water quality in the Don River and the Inner Harbour. A main source of water pollution is stormwater runoff and combined sewer overflows released from outfalls into Toronto's waterways after heavy rains or snow melts. To control this pollution, over the next few decades, the City of Toronto will deliver the largest and most significant water quality improvement program in Canada. The program consists of a number of substantial infrastructure projects that, working together, will significantly improve the water quality in the Lower Don River, Taylor Massey Creek, and along Toronto's Inner Harbour. This will be done by keeping combined sewer overflow out of our waterways while upgrading technology and capacity in a number of areas. To better understand the problem, let's take a look at the city's sewer system. Approximately a quarter of the city's sewer system, much of which was built more than a century ago, has combined sewers, in which there is only one pipe that carries both sewage and stormwater. Most of the time, combined sewers can carry all contents. However, during periods of heavy rainfall, combined sewers may fill beyond capacity and some of the combined sewage overflows untreated directly into creeks, rivers and the lake. Combined sewer overflows were designed to act as a relief valve to prevent sewer overloads, which could lead to basement flooding. By virtually eliminating combined sewer overflows to the Lower Don River, Taylor Massey Creek and the Inner Harbour, we significantly improve water quality. This means better water quality for recreational uses like swimming, boating and fishing, as well as for aquatic and other wildlife. Improved water quality also decreases excessive algae growth and supports revitalization efforts along the central waterfront. This moves us closer to delisting Toronto's waterfront as a polluted area of concern in the Great Lakes Basin. The Don River and Central Waterfront and connected projects will increase capacity in the system to allow for future population growth, as well as better enable necessary periodic maintenance of the city's most important trunk sewer, which currently services approximately 30% of the city. Don River and Central Waterfront Wet Weather Flow System, the most ambitious component of the project, consists of three tunnels and a number of shafts and connection points that serve to capture combined sewer overflow, transport it for treatment, and during heavy rainfall, store the overflow until the water can be treated. The project will be done in stages. The first stage is the Coxwell Bypass Tunnel, a 10.5 kilometer long, 6.3 meter diameter tunnel. The Inner Harbor Tunnel, which will be 5.6 kilometers long and more than 6 meters in diameter, will eventually connect with the existing Western Beaches Tunnel. The next stages include the Taylor Massey Creek Tunnel, currently in the planning stage. The project also has 11 wet weather flow storage shafts along the tunnels, which will help store stormwater during heavy rainfall, and 7 offline storage tanks that will help provide relief to the city's sewer system. Projects at the Ashbridges Bay Wastewater Treatment Plant will help manage the existing and increased flows from the Don River and Central Waterfront wet weather flow system. The Western Beaches Tunnel, built in the early 2000s, is in the west end of Toronto along Lake Ontario. The tunnel is 3.6 kilometers long and 3 meters in diameter, with various shafts along its length. The tunnel collects a mix of storm and wastewater from local storm and combined sewers. As a result, instead of being discharged into the lake, the flows can be held and sent to wastewater plants for treatment before being released to the lake. The Western Beaches Tunnel will undergo upgrades in the next few years and will eventually connect with the Don River and Central Waterfront Wet Weather Flow System. Specifically, the Western Beaches Tunnel will connect to the Inner Harbour West Tunnel. Storm and wastewater will then travel by gravity through these tunnels to the new integrated pumping station being constructed at the Ashbridges Bay Wastewater Treatment Plant. 
a new integrated pumping station will be built to receive and pump flows into Ashbridges Bay wastewater treatment plant from three tiers. including the flows that currently go to two older existing pumping stations, as well as the additional flows that will come from the new tunnel system. The new pumping station will include a tri-level pump house building, a new screening building, and a new generator building, which will ensure operations can continue during power outages. This new integrated pumping station will replace the two existing pumping stations north of Lakeshore Boulevard that are aging and in need of replacement. Until the new integrated pumping station is ready for operation, the two existing pumping stations will continue to convey flows to the Ashbridges Bay Wastewater Treatment Plant for treatment. The Ashbridges Bay Landform Project is a joint initiative between the City of Toronto and the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. The landform construction reuses soil and rock from the nearby Ashbridges Bay Outfall Tunnel and Don River Central Waterfront Wet Weather Flow Projects, allowing for materials to be repurposed on-site. This on-site reuse of materials has reduced construction-related traffic in the area during construction. The landform provides erosion protection, helping reduce the need for regular sediment removal especially in the Coatsworth Cut area of Ashbridges Bay. Once built, the landform will serve as the site for a new, high-rate treatment facility. The new integrated pumping station will be able to pump flows to either Ashbridges Bay Treatment Plant or the high-rate treatment facility for treatment. The high-rate treatment facility is being designed specifically to provide treatment of combined sewer overflows intercepted by the new tunnel system. The new state-of-the-art ultraviolet or UV disinfection system will replace the current chlorine disinfection system, providing disinfection without the use of chemicals. The new system will use the latest UV lamp technology, which is more energy efficient and requires less space than conventional UV lamps. The wastewater treatment plant outfall is used to discharge and disperse the treated effluent into Lake Ontario. The new outfall will replace one that was built in the late 1940s. It will be much larger, extend further out into the lake, and will be constructed in rock well below the lake bed. The outfall required rock to be mined beneath the lake bed to build a 3.5 kilometer long, 7 meter diameter tunnel. The outfall tunnel contains numerous riser pipes that will eventually disperse treated and disinfected wastewater into the lake. This new outfall will help improve the quality of the lake's shoreline, beaches, and lake water quality by ensuring wastewater is dispersed farther from the shore. Lake Ontario has always and continues to play a vital role in the economic, social, and cultural life of Toronto. As a city, we are committed to improving, protecting, and preserving our waterways today and tomorrow.